Hello, and welcome to our annual Amazon Advertising Holiday Webinar, um, Holiday Readiness with Amazon Ads. We're going to be sharing the latest tips and strategies with you guys today. Uh, my name is Vince Montero. I'm the Senior Marketing uh, Product Marketing Manager for our PPC management tool here called Atomic. Um, I'm very excited to have you guys here with us today, and we're going to give a couple minutes for people to, uh, to get in. There's a lot of people that register, so want to make sure everyone gets in. Um, we have a lot of good content um, to share with you guys today to hope, hopefully give you some last minute um, tactics and ideas um, to get you guys ready for the holiday selling season, which is pretty much right now and definitely uh, leading up um, to Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which is coming up quickly. Um, while we're waiting, I just want to let you guys know that most of today's content is going to be interme intermediate to advanced level. So if you're running PPC, this is, uh, you're definitely going to get advantages from watch, watching content today. If you're a beginner, you're still going to be able to get some um, nuggets, hopefully, out of this. Um, but we, I want to just let you guys know that ahead of time and also let you know we do have other training sessions. If you are a Helium 10 member, uh, you know that we're really big on our content and training. So I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that we recently announced, uh, recently released uh, Amazon PPC Academy. Uh, we launched that in September, and that's a 34 video training course, and it covers everything from the basics of PPC optimization um, through uh, how do you, you know, streamline your processes and even use third party tools um, like Atomic. So I will have a special offer at the end of this session um, if you guys are interested in more details on that, so make sure that you stay tuned. Um, also, if you're interested in learning just more about Amazon PPC in general, um, I do host monthly training sessions called Tacos Tuesday, uh, where I feature, you know, different speakers from a PPC um, and different topics, um, including the latest and greatest things that we have going on here at um, Helium 10. Um, and if you're interested in that, there is Q&A afterwards, so you can actually get your questions answered. Um, and if you're in our social medias, you'll see the posts about that. So keep an eye on that for the latest ones. They're, the, they're typically the first Tuesdays of every single month. So I Definitely think that you guys would benefit from that if you're looking for Q&A style uh, webinars. This one is not a Q&A style, so typically I do have that, but just a reminder that this there will not be a Q&A after this particular webinar. We will have the recording available, but it will only be available for 30 days. So definitely, you know, you can look at that, but you might want to just go ahead and take good notes either way. Um, so either uh, I want to introduce our speaker, because we do have somebody here from uh, Amazon Ads. Uh, so let's welcome uh, Brett Darby, who is our Senior Partner Development Manager. Um, and he's going to be sharing content with you guys first. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap that up. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Brett. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And thank you so much for having me, Vince. It's always a pleasure to be speaking with you. And it was great to get to connect in New York a couple of weeks ago at Unboxed. Yes, exactly. Unboxed was an amazing event. So if you guys, uh, maybe some of you were there, uh, Amazon has their yearly conference, first time in person, right? The past couple of years, because right? it has, yeah. been, right, Brett? Yep. So, um, lots of really great announcements. And actually, uh, I had to add one thing in particular uh, in the end of my slides, because um, it was a really big announcement that Amazon made regarding um, sponsored display, but I don't want to give that too much away. I want you guys to, to stay on so you hear about what that latest update was from Amazon ads. Um, but for now, uh, Brett, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and take it away? Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to be bringing you guys some interesting insights. And I just want to say thanks again to you, Vince, for making this possible. And thanks to Helium 10 for hosting this webinar. Uh, you know, I'm excited to share some insights from Amazon Ads perspective and to try to help each of you better prepare for the holiday shopping season ahead of us. Now, to begin with, I'm going to go through a quick agenda so we can talk about the specific topics we'll be covering today. Oops. Now, to begin with, we're going to go through an overview of how Amazon Ads can help you before looking more specifically at the timing that most advertisers will leverage when they're preparing for the holidays. Now, this includes the lead up period before the event, the actual event itself, and then the lead out period immediately following the event. We'll cover some campaign measurement best practices so that you can quantify the impact of your advertising efforts before closing out with some recommendations. So let's go ahead and just jump right into how Amazon ads can help. Now, 
It's important to think about the journey that your customers are going to take prior to, during, and after the shopping event that you're preparing for. Now, whether that's Cyber 5, Prime Day, or really any other tent post event, the foundation of your advertising efforts should be centered around connecting with audiences when and where they're ready to engage. And Amazon ads can help you reach these audiences both on and off of Amazon. Now, whether that's a customer listening to festive playlists on Amazon Music, somebody watching their favorite holiday movie on Freebie, or somebody live streaming some decor ideas from one of their favorite creators on Twitch, Amazon Ads has a universe of ways for you to build relationships with your audiences beyond just serving ads to them when they're searching or browsing the Amazon store. Now, in a bit, we'll look at which ad combinations can help during different phases of a customer's journey. But first, let's take a look at the timing that most brands consider when they are preparing their holiday ad strategy. To maximize performance during Q4, advertisers should consider a three-phased advertising approach that includes a lead-up period, the, this is the period when shoppers are discovering the products that they want to shop for. Next, the shopping event itself, where advertisers can turn on advertising tactics to convert brand aware audiences and remarket to those audiences. And then finally, the lead out period. And this is when you can re engage brands or re engage audiences and in market audiences who didn't purchase your product during the event. And when you combine all of these efforts, you can make your brand's investment work harder and smarter for you in Q4. Now, before we take a deeper look at each individual phase, let's take a look at some statistics that shoppers shared with us on how they feel about inventory and out-of-stock concerns this Q4. I think there's some interesting shopping insights from Amazon and Kantar. Now, nearly 50% of surveyed shoppers shared with us that they'll start shopping as early as October due to out-of-stock concerns. That means that one in two will have already begun their holiday shopping last month. Now, we also found that 45.9% shared willingness to try new brands or products if the preferred brand they're shopping for happens to be out of stock. Another interesting insight was that only one in five or roughly 20% are likely or highly likely to be concerned about finding products that they want this Q4. This is a marked shift from trends we were seeing just a few years ago. Now next, I wanna look at how a marketing funnel can be visualized to help you understand which ad types are commonly used to build awareness or drive consideration and sales, as well as which ad types are used to build loyalty. Now, when you look at the marketing funnel, you'll see that Amazon ad solutions are useful for every stage of the Q4 shopper journey. And one of the best ways to help drive down funnel sales is to fill the top of your funnel early. Ultimately, you have to figure out what solutions work best for your products. For example, you can use products like sponsored display or sponsored brands to help cross and upsell existing audiences on the full breadth of your catalog. Now, this graphic on screen isn't designed to be an exhaustive list of all of the available solutions, but rather a general guide to help you visualize some of the solutions that we see commonly used by brands on Amazon during Q4. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper and look at specific ad products being used during the lead-up phase. Now, as Amazon or as traffic in Amazon stores begins to increase leading up to the holidays, it's really important to understand that shoppers are using this lead up time to learn about new brands and they're in need of some inspiration on what to buy. 57.5% of shoppers surveyed by Kantar reported having an idea of what they wanted to purchase, but needing more inspiration to ultimately make a decision. Now, this is an opportunity for you to showcase your brand's products using sponsored brands or sponsored display during the lead-up phase, appealing to the nearly 60% of shoppers who said they still need some inspiration. Now, this next statistic is also equally eye-opening. Shoppers surveyed shared that over 70% are likely or highly likely to purchase a product during the shopping event week that they discovered leading up to the event. Now, this suggests that planning to have your brand present leading up to the shopping event is not only beneficial for brand discovery, but it's also leading directly to additional purchases. Now, next, we're going to look at which ad solutions are commonly used during that lead up phase so you can make sure you're building awareness properly. Now, one way to engage these audiences that visit Amazon to browse or discover and shop is by making them very aware of your brand. And you can do this using ad products like sponsor brands or sponsored display, or even programmatic solutions like ADSP, if that's something within your brand's wheelhouse. 
Now note that ADSP isn't a focus of this webinar, and I'm not going to cover it in much more detail than what I just shared. As if you're not already using it, it probably doesn't make sense for you to try to roll it out this late in the quarter. Now, there's still plenty of other solutions to reach these audiences in their building awareness phase by leveraging brand advertising solutions, just like sponsored display. And by filling the top of your funnel and building awareness early on in the event, you'll unlock new audiences that are still seeking that inspiration, like the 57.5% that we surveyed earlier. Now, reaching these audiences when and where they're ready to start discovering products can be an important first step in achieving your Q4 advertising goals. Next, I want to look at some insights to guide how we might consider adjusting the ad types that you use as the event begins to unfold. Now, immediately following the lead up phase is the actual shopping event. This is where your preparation and awareness efforts will transform into increasing consideration and driving purchases. In the next few slides, we're going to look at some statistics that can help guide your preparation for Q4. While shoppers are actively exploring other products from competitors, we've learned that brands who promoted their ASINs with sponsored ad solutions have helped drive higher consideration and purchases. Consideration being measured by detail page views and purchases being measured by ordered product sales. Now, both of these are key metrics to consider as you're working on your advertising campaign for Q4. And we observed a 436% higher consideration for ASINs being advertised during the shopping event versus those without an, an advertisement. We also saw a correlation with 434% higher sales for those same ASINs when advertised versus those not advertised. And while those statistics on their own can be striking enough, there are downstream benefits to brands who advertise ASINs as other ASINs in the brand's catalog will experience what we call halo sales as well. Let's take a look at some stats on that. Here you can see the impacts on the impact to non-promoted products within a brand's catalog. And while shoppers are excited to shop deals, they're also shopping other products within that same brand's catalog. As an example, we've learned that there's a halo effect on non-ad promoted, promoted products during the event that results in a median lift on sales for those ASINs, suggesting that your brand's ad promoted investment during the shopping event impacts more than just the ASINs that you're promoting. We also saw that 40% of shoppers told us that during the shopping event, they were likely or highly likely to buy other products from that same brand. Now, these shoppers cite deals and product quality as well as similar values to the brand as important reasons for why they decided to make a purchase. Now, back to a familiar graphic here, looking at the, the marketing funnel so we can understand the ad types we use. Here's some of the core solutions offered for advertisers to reach audiences during the event. Now, solutions like sponsored display, sponsored brands, and sponsored brand video are some of the primary solutions for increasing consideration during the event. Sponsored products is a great complement to all of these, making sure that you're driving purchases during the event as well. Now, there's many different ways of combining each ad solution to achieve the goal that you're aiming for. And the above graphic is really just designed to be an aid for understanding where each ad solution is commonly used. There's ways of getting it done with any combination if you'd like. Now, in a little bit, we'll look at the specific ad types, but first I wanna close out this three phase framework by looking at the lead out period that immediately follows the event. So you've made it through the holiday event and you wanna understand what can be done to continue to maximize your brand effort and build brand loyalty. Now, this is where the lead out phase can play a critical role in your Q4 ad advertising strategies outcomes, as well as continued results. Now, it's important to remember that purchase decisions are made after the event as well, and based on awareness and consideration that was cultivated during the event. Based on a Kantar survey, 44.5% of shoppers are likely to make a purchase from an ad they see after the shopping event. Now, this suggests that remarketing and in-market signals from your advertising efforts before and during the event play a role in your post-event sales performance as well. With over 40% of shoppers surveyed sharing that they're highly likely to repurchase the same product after the event when the product is not even on deal anymore, but they do state that they rely on an ad to be reminded to repurchase that product. Similarly, over 40% surveyed shared that they're likely to switch back to purchasing a product that was out of stock during the event, highlighting that brand loyalty that we love. Now, 
When we look at building loyalty, the lead out period presents an opportunity to re-engage with these audiences and make sure that the solutions you're presenting are ones the customers are interested in engaging with, making your brand investment work harder and smarter for you overall. Now, you'll notice A plus content, which is referring to the product detail page section of the PDP. Now, this is really a retail feature and not necessarily an ad solution, but it is nevertheless an important piece of your customer's journey. And you'll notice that sponsored products and sponsored brands and display are also included when you're trying to build loyalty. Now, speaking about A plus anecdotally, I've personally revisited a detail page after buying a product and receiving it in the mail. I simply wanted to check to make sure I was using it correctly and check some of its functionality. But while I was visiting that A plus content and reading through it, I realized that there were additional complimentary offers that I would be interested in, opening up the opportunity for upsell and cross sell from the same brand. Now, it wasn't an advertisement that won that sale, but rather them having great A plus content that led me to consider purchasing those additional products. Now, for anyone interested, I'm a cyclist, and this was a cycling accessory that I decided to buy, and I hadn't fully researched it when I bought it. I just knew I needed it. But then, as a consumer, I went back and started discovering more of the intangible and, and uh, difficult to discern features of that product so that I could understand how to use it best. I ended up buying two more products from that same brand, and I'm sure they're happy with the loyalty that I've shared. But enough about bikes. Let's go ahead and pedal on down to the next part, which is measuring the impact of all of your efforts. And we'll cover a couple of the ad solutions that we've already talked about in more detail, sharing some new insights. Now, when you come to measuring your impact, it's important that you have a plan in place. Now, including what this includes what indicators you need to be looking for during each phase of the event, the lead up, the event, and the lead out. But it's really important to have both an understanding of the phase as well as the specific ad solution that you're looking to use. So you can create a measurement plan with an understanding of what actions you're trying to drive, whether it be awareness, consideration, sales, or loyalty, as each effort can have a differing outcome. Now, let's look first at the specific product we started with, sponsored display. Now with sponsored display, you can help drive results with automatically generated display ads that showcase your product. Now the key differentiator for sponsored display is that these ads can appear both on and off of Amazon. Sponsored display offers audience and product targeting options as a way to connect or reconnect with customers as they're thinking through their purchase decisions. And if they happen to leave Amazon, you can still promote your products with sponsored display on other sites to remind them to come back and make a purchase. Now, this reminds me of an important concept called going out of aisle. And I'd like to take a moment to focus on this term and help us unpack what it really means. While you might think of most contextual campaign targeting as in aisle, for example, you're selling t-shirts. So you would engage with audiences that are looking at similar types of items in apparel. Going out of aisle with sponsored display allows you to reach new audiences who might not be actively shopping for your product, but are still engaged. Going back to our t-shirt example, this could be a gamer audience who's interested in shirts with game characters on them, opening new opportunities to reach those customers. Here at Amazon, we use sophisticated relevance models to help determine these audiences, so you feel empowered to bring the insights to your campaigns while still maintaining a good shopper experience. This ability to reach new customers is why sponsored display is so good at helping you drive new to brand sales. One new opportunity with sponsored display ads is a brand new solution that Vince hinted to earlier. And it's sponsored display video ads, which can complement your existing sponsored brand video placements by showing your video ad in new places, including off of Amazon. Now brands can deliver immersive videos with tutorials or demos and unboxing, as well as testimonials. And then they can measure those results using campaign performance metrics they understand from sponsored display metrics. You can also include these audiences in a conversion-focused campaign run during the event and the lead-out periods, maximizing the impact from all of your learnings during the lead-up. Now, before we switch to sponsored brands, let's take a quick deeper dive looking at sponsored display tips. Now, inventory and product availability fluctuates rapidly during these periods. And luckily, sponsored display has some natural benefits built into it to help access to help advertisers during this time period. Retail awareness ensures that ads are never shown if a product is out of stock or it's not the featured offer. 
Now this ensures that there's efficient spend and so your advertisers are only paying for the ads that may convert. Additionally, automated and dynamic creatives that use machine learning save time when you're creating campaigns on the fly during a hectic time period like Q4. Now, we've also developed a few best practices to help drive consideration and conversion over these periods. And I'd like to share one now. Sponsored display can be paired with your promotions and deliver strategy to maximize your creative impact. Now remember that automated badging can increase sponsored display click-through rates by up to 42%. So when you're promoting products which are on offer during these high events, that should work fairly well for you. Sponsored display can also promote loyalty through cross-selling strategies on your own detail pages, creating an impactful brand statement. So in addition to using sponsor display to drive incremental traffic, you can also use it to, to drive complementary sales on popular competing detail pages and increasing the traffic to your own detail pages. Now, let's jump off of sponsored display right to sponsored brands and take a look at some of the benefits of sponsored brands. Now, sponsored brands, for those who aren't familiar, is a customizable cost per click solution that helps customers discover and engage with brands as they shop on Amazon. The ads feature rich creative that help you tell your brand's story. And you can choose from three distinct formats, a custom image, a store spotlight, or a video ad. And it's a great way to drive a brand, brand awareness that can lead to future product promotion. Now, brands who launch a sponsored brand campaign uh, after using stores and sponsored products together saw on average 14% higher sales 10% higher detail page views, 22% higher clicks, and 26% higher ad impressions, all illustrating that sponsored brands can be an important component of your marketing mix. Now, sponsored brand ads can be used to drive awareness, consideration, but they can also be used as a conversion-focused campaign when using sponsored brand video. So let's do a quick deep dive into some best practices around sponsored brand video and help you be best prepared for Q4. Now, the first tip is knowing your audience. Amazon customers are shopping for products and brands, and your content should be educational or demonstrative and product focused, most of all. Think of the questions that a buyer might ask when they're researching the product, and then try to inform them of those things in the video. Now, second, showing your product quickly. Our research shows that videos that feature the product prominently within the first second typically perform better than those that don't. Don't waste your chance to engage with shoppers by including a long introduction or a slow fade in. It doesn't need to be cinematic mastery. Now third, keep it brief, keep it focused. We recommend an optimal video length of 15 to 30 seconds to relay your message, hold customer's attention. Now limit your content to just a handful of key selling points to ensure that your message is well received and digested by the customer. Fourth, optimize for the format. Your video should work without sound, and you'll need to ensure that on-screen text can be easily read on a mobile device, and it isn't obstructing the user interface that's positioned within the video area, a common key moderation rejection we see. Now, lastly and fifth, consider the loop. Once the video ends, it's going to automatically loop. Consider adding an end card or allowing for some breathing room, or better yet, See if you can get creative and make it loop seamlessly so that you can repurpose that video on other platforms. Now, video really isn't the only way of leveraging sponsor brands. If you aren't yet producing product videos or considering using a custom landing image, then you may look at the other solutions from sponsored brands as more tangible. Things like featuring your store on a spotlight or featuring a singular custom image that you take on your iPhone are all opportunities for brands looking to get creative this Q4 you can create a richer and more eye-catching, captivating experience for shoppers by using imagery that's not already seen on detail pages and in the product images. Now, keep in mind that phases of awareness and consideration of purchase and loyalty that we talked about earlier when you're building out your sponsored brand strategy as well. Now, lastly, let's look at a solution that we should all be familiar with, uh, sponsored products. Now, sponsored products lets you target keywords or products to help you increase visibility of an individual item. Now, these ads can show in shopping results and on product detail pages. And it's a great way to promote your products as shoppers are looking for similar items or categories. It is worth remembering that a peak shopping event such as Cyber 5 might result in increased traffic to Amazon. And this can result in more clicks, 
which can exhaust your bu budget quicker than normal. Make the most of this by ensuring that your campaigns have sufficient budget to keep running and engaging customers throughout the event. If you've advertised during Cyber5 before, review your results and see what learnings you can apply to this year. For example, if you ran out of budget before, you can see if you can prevent that from happening this year by setting a higher budget or reevaluating negative keywords. Additionally, you can also estimate the budget to set this year by multiplying your previous cost per click against your click to conversion ratio and against the amount of clicks that you'd like to have as a goal. This can help you formulate a rough budget so that you can better prepare for this Q4. Now you'll also want to maintain your visibility. And once a campaign's out of budget, your ads won't be eligible to show until midnight when the campaign daily budget resets. So to stay competitive during peak days, we recommend you set your bids to the maximum amount you're willing to pay for a click. You can lower your bids in seconds anytime you choose. You can also take advantage of dynamic bidding features within sponsored products. Similarly, you can take advantage of bid multipliers and modifiers to make sure that you're bidding either dynamically up and down or whichever way that you feel works best for your products. Now this helps you focus your spend on quality clicks and it can reduce the amount of time spent on less impactful placements. Now let's recap the timing and cover some of those ads, the ad types that we already looked at so far. So to sum things up, here's a proposed Q4 strategy for a brand using sponsored ad solutions. During the lead up phase, the Amazon store is a destination for shoppers discovering and trying new products. And we recommend increasing awareness for your brand or specific products with audiences looking to discover new brands. Now, this can involve ad solutions like sponsored display or sponsored brand video. Keep in mind that sponsored products, keyword, and product targeting are other great ways of increasing product awareness on competing detail pages leading up to, during, and after the event. Now, during Cyber 5, the actual event days, leverage a better together campaign that combines multiple Amazon ad solutions to help build the story of your brand with audiences and drive sales. Use new to brand metrics to help you understand how your lead up awareness efforts have performed. Finally, leading out of Cyber 5, I encourage you to continue to reach new and existing audiences across multiple touch points who have purchased or have yet to purchase your brand. Sponsored display offers remarketing capabilities that can help you maximize your post-event re-engagement efforts wherever those, audience suit, wherever those audiences choose to engage. Now, that's it for me. And I'd like to say thank you to Vince and the Helium 10 crew for having me here. And I'd love to pass it over to Vince here so we can go through a little bit more practical application on Helium 10's tools and ad strategies. Thanks, Brett. Lots of really great information there. Uh, before I move forward, what, what is Cyber5? I actually have not heard it described that way, so many of our viewers might not know exactly what that means. Cyber5 is a, an industry term you may or may not have heard, uh, mm -hmm. but effectively what it, what it means is it's looking at the days immediately following Thanksgiving. So you typically have Black Friday sales, you have a Small Business Saturday, you go into Sunday, and then you have Cyber Monday. And that five-day window is really a, a key period to engage shoppers and help them understand what offers you have to sell. Perfect. Okay. That is what I, I assumed that it was. But again, since you're here and uh, here to share your, your wealth of knowledge, I thought I'd just ask you directly. Of course. <laughs> so for those of you who may not have uh, heard of Helium 10, there might be some of you that found a link to this uh, webinar today that don't really know about Helium 10. I just wanted to give you guys a really quick, uh, you know, touch base on who we are and what we do. So Helium 10 is a product suite, a software suite of insanely powerful tools um, to help uh, serious Amazon sellers grow in every aspect of their business. Um, here at Helium 10, we try to empower entrepreneurs globally with the power of data, ongoing training, and community support to maximize their potential and thrive in e-commerce. Um, from opportunity seekers to full-time sellers, uh, brands, agencies, and everyone in between, Helium 10 really champions our community of 2 million online uh, sellers with the tools to succeed. Um, and our all-in-one software suite takes the headache out of mystery out of uh, succeeding on Amazon, uh, while our leading-edge educational resources and communities and in-person events uh, that I mentioned before and like we're doing right here, we have elite workshops too that we do and invite people to those. 
Uh, we really want to provide sellers with insight and support to build and to build and grow a lasting business on Amazon um, and beyond. So now on to our topics. Uh, Brett uh, covered his outline. So I just want to do a really quick outline of what I'm going to go over in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. So uh, a couple of things uh, Brett uh, touched base on that we're going to just do a deeper dive on is researching and forecasting your budgets. Obviously very important to make sure that that is handled leading up to a very busy season. Adjusting your ACOS goals, and that includes you know, adjusting maybe the perception of what your ACOS should be during the holidays. I'm going to give some insights on how to optimize your search terms and targets with some additional um, uh, deeper data points. And then leveraging the power of hourly data, which is also a newer feature that we are now using with the Amazon ads. Um, and then we're going to wrap up with just some last minute holiday tips um, and go into some of the deeper dives with, uh, with some of the comments that are uh, things that Brett shared. So number one, controlling your budgets. Uh, if you can, and you do have time to do that now, the best thing to do if you can is schedule your budgets ahead of time. So why would you need to do that? If you sold or if you sold the same product last year, you might have some additional insights um, of what to expect or project this holiday season. Depending on when you started with Helium 10 and Atomic, you can actually see your uh, data from last year because we do save up to two years worth of data. If you're a newer seller though, and you don't have any data from the last holiday season, you can still take into consideration maybe what your recent spend is the past couple of months and ask yourself, is my budget sufficient enough to account for at least double the amount of clicks, which you could expect to see in the holiday season. So in order to take advantage of this busy uh, period, campaign budgets really should be increased so that they stay active and enabled throughout the day. Um, so here is a real quick holiday sponsored ads budget plan. Um, you know, right now we're in the holiday planning uh, uh, period. So really your goal is to expand and make sure that you're taking advantage of maybe some early shoppers uh, that Brett mentioned. So you're going to want to increase your budget on sponsored ads by up to or at least 50%. Um, so that's the minimum recommendation. If you're just wanting to do, you know, best practices is increase those by 50%. Um, I do want to point out that you do want to also maintain your branded keywords uh, campaigns. If you are not running branded keyword campaigns, you absolutely should start some of those. And all that simply means is having campaigns that include your product's uh, name in the keyword. There's lots of different variations that my, uh, shoppers might be using. So you'll want to check to see uh, just by putting your product's name in the Amazon search bar, what other variations of that search term are coming up and you can use those for PPC campaigns. Um, so through Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or the Cyber Five, uh, you definitely wanna make sure that you're promoting, as Brett said, increasing those sponsor brand ads uh, and driving uh, more traffic is gonna be the key to really capturing uh, that audience and making sure that they're aware of your product. Um, and again, uh, just a nod back to the branded keywords campaigns, you're really gonna invest in that if you have historical data, just make sure that, again, you have enough budget in there to make sure that those are on across all the different campaign types where you're using that strategy. And then through the holiday stretch, really what that is, is, you know, maybe even after Cyber 5 through Christmas, you're going to want to just maintain and, and really outlast the potential your uh, uh, competitors that might drop off right after Cyber 5. Uh, you want to allocate enough of your budget to get last minute shoppers. Um, you know, with Amazon Prime, you have the ability to get uh, gifts up to two days before Christmas. So there's definitely going to be last minute shoppers. And you just want to make sure that your budgets are in place um, and also track your competitors and increase your budgets when they have dropped off, which they potentially can. So now that we've outlined um, uh, uh, the plan, uh, here's just one simple way to help you manage your budget. Now, this is located at the campaign level. Um, and budget rules are here to help you, uh, boost your sales by preventing high performing campaigns from running out of budget. So budget rules allow you to set rules um, and increase those daily budgets and really takes a lot of the manual work out of having to do this um, so that it's automatically done for you and turned back off after the holidays, depending on what, what you're looking to do. Now, there's two different types of budget rules. There is a schedule uh, uh, based rule, which is basically just a, a time frame dates that you would use. And that allows you to set those budgets in advance for special events like Prime Day, which we just had, um, or the upcoming um, uh, Cyber 5 uh, time period. 
or you can do it based on performance. So this allows you to set the rules based um, to increase your budgets uh, based on certain metrics that you might want to look at. Maybe it's a cost, maybe it's click through rate. There's several metrics that you can choose from um, in order to make some performance based rules. So these rules can be created um, again per campaign for those products that may have high demand during the holidays. So especially if you're top selling products, this might be something you wanna do for each one of those campaigns. So in this example, uh, it shows the scheduled version of a budget rule. Um, and this will help you plan your budget ahead of time, again, for a very specific period. Now, Amazon's uh, very helpful in this in that they already have a preset budget in here for events like Black Friday or Cyber Monday in this example. And this is automatically gonna increase your campaign budget during that time and then put it back afterwards. So Amazon will provide a recommendation for the budget increases based on the product um, and based on the dates that you've selected. Um, in this example, you can see it's 94% increase, but you can also alter that percentage increase to whatever it is that you want to do. So um, beyond uh, planning your budgets and adjusting your budgets if you can ahead of time, you're also gonna wanna adjust your ACOS strategy. And like I mentioned before, um, that's really maybe looking and reevaluating re what your ACOS goals and your caps are during the holiday season. Um, so adjusting your ACOS expectations simply means if your goal is to remain profitable on your PPC campaigns during this time, uh, you should really know what your break-even ACOS is. Um, and your break-even ACOS is that point where you'll start losing money from advertising uh, after product costs and fees. However, if you really want to take advantage of the increased traffic, uh, and take an aggressive approach, then the higher ACOS target is actually it might be better. Aiming too low during the holiday season may cause you to maybe uh, prematurely optimize or uh, you know uh, your campaigns before the really trap the high traffic days start, and this could cause you to miss out on some sales. So, in looking at the big picture, uh, considering your total sales um, and therefore or your total ACOS or tacos. Uh, I, like, I like to talk about here at Helium 10. This is just an, another way to look at your uh, results. And it's an important metric to gauge success of your advertising during the holidays. So if you don't know what the ACOS versus taco is, uh, tacos is, it's basically just uh, what we're trying to look at is something more holistic with your PPC. Because PPC is not just about the sales that you make for, from PPC. It's really your marketing budget and it's your branding and that has an effect on shoppers the more times they see it. So if your product is something that they're looking for um, uh, for themselves, they might consider, might be a slightly longer consideration cycle. Um, and so if the more they see your product, they might go and type in your product name right away, which again is important to have those branded keyword campaigns. But the more they see your ad, this is gonna help uh, increase your chances for organic sales even. So since we do wanna connect PPC with organic sales, we should also consider those metrics in our calculations to gauge the advertising's total effects. And that is where your total ACOS comes into play. So uh, just for clarification, again, ACOS is simply looking at your PPC spend divided by your PPC sales alone. And looking at this holistically, your tacos or total ACOS is your PPC spend divided by your total sales and your organic uh, plus PPC sales. So here at Helium 10, we do make it a, a little easy for you to uh, view this uh, metric. We do have it available in our analytics section under the product uh, page. And this is where you can look at each one of your products, see your uh, PPC spend for that product across all your, your PPC campaigns, but then also weighed against what your total sales were for that particular product. So this is a great way, again, to gauge the success of your PPC as it has to do with uh, your total sales and your organic sales versus just looking at ACOS alone. So if you are considering your tacos metric, especially during the holidays, a product with a lower tacos can afford additional budget towards its PPC campaign. So generally speaking, if you have a 15 to 10% total ACOS, it doesn't really matter how high your, a your, your ACOS is. If your tacos is really low, you actually can afford to throw more money in those PPC campaigns because you are seeing a net positive result, a net positive result for all your, all your sales organically as well. So that is definitely something to consider as you're looking at increasing campaigns uh, for certain products during the holidays. So an additional way to obviously optimize everything is to make adjustments 
And Amazon does have a great way that I want to mention to uh, make adjustments at the account level in the targeting area. This is um, a fairly new area within Amazon, so I do like to, to uh, mention when I can. Um, and it really easily allows you to review all the targets for your account. Um, this is all ASINs, categories, even the auto campaign targets. Um, you can do things if you're looking to optimize things down, especially for the holidays. You can sort and optimize your high ACoS keywords or high spend uh, keywords maybe with no sales. So you want to look for things that have been wasteful maybe for the past couple of months. Maybe trim those out before the holidays because if they likely have not converted before, they're not going to potentially convert as well during the holidays. Now, again, this is perfect for optimizing exact match uh, keywords and ASIN targets. Um, and also a quick review of all targets without impressions. Uh, you can see in the upper right hand corner, you can see that there's 10,000 uh, search terms that don't have any impressions or keywords that don't have impressions. So if you wanted to see if you can get some traction on those during the holidays, you can click on that and you can really easily increase bids across the board for those. But uh, again, going back to the optimizing down, you really only want to use this for your exact match keywords and ASIN targets because you're really looking at that exact data point and the results of that data point. Whereas if you're using broad or phrase match keywords, those are things that you want to optimize on the search term level because you could have multiple search terms that are attached to those broad or phrase match keywords. So you can also make similar adjustments in Atomic. We recently did launch bulk features in also in our analytics section. So I just wanted to note that you can review the analytics section for, again, high level keywords for your entire account. That's the ASINs, the categories, and the auto campaign targets as well. Um, and sort and optimize by maybe your low ACoS keywords here and, uh, and high sales keywords, and maybe increase them. So this isn't uh, something you want to do in preparation for the holidays. Find your things that are converting well and make sure that you're maximizing those potential by increasing those bids. And again, this is just a perfect way to optimize the keywords in time for that holiday rush, which we, it, we are in right now and it's coming up. So we're gonna go into kind of, a, like I mentioned earlier, just a deeper dive into some data points that we do have available for you um, that might actually uh, adjust your strategy for some of your targets. Now, uh, to begin, um, search terms are kind of the, the, the blood, the lifeblood of your PPC campaign. So really having clear insights into your search term is key to making sure that you have a very healthy PPC account. So knowing what's happening on the search term level, again, it's one of the most important factors in gauging performance. The search term detail page uh, within Atomic allows you to look at your search term performance over time across your entire account. And this gives you additional insights into the behavior of your advertising campaigns um, and really deep detail so that you can drive traffic maybe towards your higher performers. So let's take a look at an example of that. So uh, here's an example of a search term deep uh, detail page for the search term Coffin Shelf, which is a product that uh, Bradley runs in his Project X account, if you guys have seen that series. Um, and you can really easily see across the entire account, this search term is linked by Amazon to five different keywords. Now the keywords also happen to all be uh, you know, coffin shelf as well, but regardless, it could be uh, different keywords that are attached to that search term. You can really easily see that there's a, a red campaign here, which indicates a high ACoS of, uh, uh, looks like a, over 130%. That might be something that's a red flag for you that you're gonna want to take care of maybe before the holidays. So that would simply mean going into that particular campaign and maybe negative matching coffin shelf as a search term, because you do see that it's performing well in the other, uh, when it's linked to other keywords in different campaigns. Now this view has five different campaigns, but we do give you visibility up to 10 campaigns that you can look at. And this is uh, something that you can look at, again, search term at a time, your, maybe your high spend ones, and really kind of gauge how it's performing uh, as linked to different keywords in different campaigns and potentially make some um, optimization decisions. So we also have additional insights into your keywords which are also very important as well. Uh, keyword detail page is, a, again, a way to get deeper insights into the, your important targets and your keywords in your account. Um, our analytics page really provides some sophisticated insights into keyword performance, um, but the keyword detail page takes it a step further so that you can look at visually um, how keywords are performing over time. So this will give you unprecedented insight into which campaigns your keywords are performing uh, uh, best whereas the previous one is where the search terms are performing against, against which keywords. 
This gives you greater control over who is seeing your advertising. So pro tip here, again, as I mentioned, kind of uh, alluded to before, when reviewing broader phrase match targets, uh, even in this detail page, you want to optimize at the search term level, again, as that's the best practice, because you don't see, unless you're in the search term report for those keywords, you really don't see exactly what is going on. So for this detail page that is at the keyword level, uh, we have an example here of a bike rack, steady rack, which is the product name or brand name. Um, and you, what, the, what this detail page really allows you to do is, over time, tell you what, how it's performing based on what bid. So there's lots of green on this particular screen in this example. So this keyword has performed really well over time, but you can see that there's uh, maybe a higher sales amount at a lower bid um, in the second column, for example, and that bid was 956. So it's just a cent lower than what it's currently at, but this gives you an idea of all your high performing keywords. You can really do a deeper dive and see you know, what bid really performed the best in the last five changes. So it will show you up to the last five changes. You can see here, this goes back all the way to September. And if you want to make those changes manually on your keywords, this is an area where you can do that uh, within Atomic. Um, so what's next? We have, uh, Brett uh, mentioned it, but this is also something that was announced during the uh, unboxed um, uh, session a couple of weeks ago. And something we've been working on for quite a few months here is really leveraging hourly data. Um, and this will help you drill down into your campaigns to review trends, and then that may help you optimize your PPC campaigns even more. So what we get with hourly data is answers to some of these questions that you might have had over time as a seller. So if you've ever wondered things like, what hour of the day is my ACOS the lowest, uh, when do I get the most traffic in general? Um, does my shopper does shopper behavior change for my product over the weekends? Um, how long does it take for customers on average to convert after a click? So these are things that uh, we've you know uh, heard over the the years, and it's really hard to get answers to these things without having access to hourly data. And that is what we knew, we do now have access to, uh, which is uh, hourly analytics. And this really uh, allows us to get a, a bigger picture or a finer picture of what's happening within each one of the campaigns. So uh, what we've been able to do with that data here at uh, Helium 10 is actually leverage that and show you a new brand new feature within our uh, um, PPC management tool Atomic. And we're simply calling it schedules because it allows you to actually schedule some time to allocate uh, you know, budgets across your different account based on a campaign's performance. So since we are able to see hourly data now, you can actually really drill down into a campaign or a set of campaigns or your entire account if you want and really see you know, what day, what time period of the day is my ACOS higher, is, is my, are my sales higher and really make some decisions you know, based on that. So what we do have is uh, the ability to create a schedule that will uh, over time during the day, you could have this on a couple of times a day, and on different days, again, you can uh, look at the data over at least a 60 day period, which we do recommend. Again, what you're looking for here is trends. So you really wanna look at longer periods versus maybe shorter periods, because that's gonna give you a, a bigger um, data set that's actually more accurate. And once you do make those schedules and launch them, really it's all about testing. So you wanna make sure in this example as a best practice that the date is in the rule so that you can actually see you know, I created this a schedule to uh, uh, effectively pause, unpause my campaign during these certain times of day on these days. What is the result? You know, 30 days from there, you should be able to see, okay, this actually has affected my spend and maybe has reduced my ACoS if that's your goal. As everything with Amazon ads, when it's brand new, you really kind of just want to test things to make sure that it is working for your account. So on to the last minute holiday tips. Uh, again, these are just some things that uh, uh, Brett alluded to that were re recently announced and some things I just like to remind people that are available to them right before the holidays. So sponsored display video. Again, this is something that, that uh, Brett just mentioned, but we recently did uh, uh, or had a blog post posted about sponsor brands video that was released on the Amazon ads blog early this year. So the power of sponsored brand video uh, really cannot be uh, uh, understated. It's definitely something that we've seen the sellers that we've worked with that has really been a high converting uh, uh, ad type for them and really allows you to uh, tell your brand story 
and maybe even uh, have some um, uh, detail on how to use your product or maybe even unboxing processes, which people do like those types of videos. So we do expect that this new uh, placement for sponsored display uh, video placements is also going to be very, very powerful. And those that adopt this right now, if you already have video running, this is available to you uh, across all marketplaces, I believe, except for India, if that was not mentioned before. So newly launched video campaigns, these can really drive brand awareness, as Brett uh, described, and especially during the sales and the holiday season. Now, video creative can be used to tell a brand story or how to use a product, like I mentioned. I do want to say that the, uh, there is a caveat right now in that uh, this is only available for audiences. So typically when, uh, when I talk about sponsored display, it's the product targeting version of that. That is the contextual targeting. That's going to allow you to actually target particular product detail pages or PDPs, as Brett mentioned, that, uh, that you actually want your video to display on. Right now, that is currently not available. It is coming out soon. Um, but the audience is, uh, is something that is available for your sponsored display video. Um, and that is just really segments of um, uh, audiences that Amazon has designated. It could be based on different lifestyles or interests, um, life events and in market. The webinar that we did last time really kind of goes over all the different audiences. So, uh, and there's some in um, some sessions we had done before that really go deep dive into all these audiences if you are interested. But this is something that you might want to test if you really feel like your product is well suited for the holiday season. I would definitely recommend that, that you give audiences a try. Uh, the next tip, and I think Brett mentioned this as well, is dynamic bid up and down. Now, this is something that we usually, um, I don't want to say shy away from, but we don't recommend all the time because what we want to use this for is really for established campaigns. And what does that mean? That simply means that this is a campaign that is making 50 sales a week. Uh, but at or below your ACOS goal or target. That is something that you can feel fairly confident that if you do use up and down, that it's going to perform well still for you. Branded campaigns, you know, you, you should convert the best for your own branded keywords. So especially during the holidays, that might be something that you want to test dynamic up and down to make sure that you're really capturing, um, you know, all the best ad placements possible. Now, when you select this under the campaign settings, Amazon will increase your bids in case you don't know what this is. You're gonna increase the bids in real time It's more if it's more likely to convert uh, to a sale, um, but it also will still uh, lower the bid if it's less likely to convert to a sale. So it still has that, that uh, bid down um, uh, capability, but it is included, uh, the bid up is also included. And that's what makes it a little bit more dynamic than just down only. Coupons is, again, something that I like to, to bring up. This is available to everybody. So there's, there's no um, you know, limitation to this. And this is something that is definitely going to be uh, more powerful to your campaigns because everyone knows when you're doing a search that it does stand out. So coupons absolutely drive more traffic to your listing because, again, they draw the shopper's attention to your product. Um, and the green coupon badges, these can be seen on different product images. Uh, uh, sorry, campaign images, uh, search results, product listings, and they can dramatically increase the click-through rate. Uh, we had a webinar last year that had, I believe, a 40% uh, inc increasing in the click-through. So this is something that you definitely should take advantage of. Now, caveat to that is that, that they do uh, have costs associated with that. So I like to say, if you want to set aside like a mini budget just for coupons, um, that is something that you want to do. And you can set budgets so that you don't go over that budget for that particular coupon. It will take into account the, uh, the charge for the actual each uh, time it's clicked, um, as well as cover the discount that you're offering. Um, so you, you can create budgets for this and, and not so that it does not go you know, too far out of your budget. So schedule coupons as a pro tip uh, for a single product uh, or a set of products the week of Black Friday, Cyber Monday for maximum effectiveness. So if you haven't tested these before, maybe the day before uh, the Cyber 5, this is when you're going to want to implement some coupons to really take advantage of that high traffic that we are expecting over those days. Um, and that is it from our uh, for our uh, webinar today. Remember, the holiday season is a prime time to take advantage of uh, the additional traffic and expand your Amazon business. So along the way, you might need to adjust your tactics in, uh, as different obstacles and opportunities present themselves. But we do hope that this information and the strategy and tactics that we've offered you guys today uh, will help boost your sales um, this holiday season and beyond. 
Um, to help ensure your success uh, and streamline some of your efforts, we do have a special gift for brand new Diamond members, which is the minimum subscription available for our Atomic membership. So from now until um, uh, this Sunday at the end of the day, which is the 13th, we are offering 20% off um, six months of our Diamond plan. Um, and that does include, uh, again, what I mentioned earlier in the session, um, our Amazon PPC Academy course, which really, again, goes through uh, some basics of PPC, but some really advanced strategies, um, deeper dives into some of the things even that we described in today's webinar. So it's there's 30 plus videos in this series, um, and it's going to be growing. I'll be adding two more actually this month, actually. So this is something that is definitely going to be beneficial for you. If you guys are brand new to Atomic, uh, go ahead and uh, check out the offer code is just Cheers22, and this offer will automatically be applied to you. We do also have great trainings for Atomic. We automatically also get enrolled if you choose to, go, uh, to do an eight-week onboarding course, um, which is something that we are really proud of to make sure that you guys are taking advantage of all the best practices within Atomic and leveraging PPC. Now, I do want to make sure just at the very end of this um, that we will have a survey that goes out uh, to you once this webinar is over, and you'll get that link sent to you, I believe, from Zoom. So if you can uh, fill that out, uh, both uh, myself um, and Brett Darby uh, from Amazon Ads, feel free to pop back on, Brett. We really would appreciate that, uh, filling out that webinar, and that just really gives us um, you know, uh, an idea of the effectiveness of the webinar and uh, make it to make sure that we continue to produce uh, quality content for you guys. Uh, so again, thank you, Brett, for joining today. Uh, any last minute uh, words of wisdom you want to share? No, I just want to say thanks again and say how great it is to be able to hear the practical application side of this. You know, how do you actually get it done inside the tools? Um, I think it, it's very great to hear directly from you, um, and I hope to hear more from you. Thanks. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> Have a wonderful holiday season, everybody. And Thanks, uh, everyone. at the next webinar, hopefully.